shout out to the to the homie Eric Sermon, OG legend. I did not I was not I did not uh know that he was under a opioid addiction. But he said he's uh 2023. Wow, so blessed to have lived this long. He said life isn't guaranteed, so don't take it for granted. I'm fresh off rehab, seven months clean from opioids. During this time, my mom's was diagnosed with stage four cancer, liver, kidney, and chest. Mm. Changed his entire life, is what he said on his post. Mm. Um, so shout out to him for doing better. Uh, you know, that's a legend, the guy that we followed, and me alone, you know, we got one of his albums. It's like a moment for us. We got it Not at the same sure. time. Um, but it made me think about just, well, people in general, we always talk about, you know, check on your people. We hear that. Check on your strong friends. Check on your weak friends. Check on your family members. But, well, let, you know, check on people. Just yeah. check on people in general. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. just check on people. Exactly. But yeah. from a creative standpoint, <laughs> I always talk about how I feel, you know, we are wired differently as creatives. And sometimes I think I take for granted checking on people just from what we just talked about in real life, but also a creative space and just where you are. You know, sometimes I'll... I don't think it hurts to have conversations like, yo, man, is everything good? What you working on? How's your life? How's this? How's that? From a creative standpoint also, like I have some great conversations with people to check in and be like, man, what you been working on? You working on anything? You got anything coming up for the new year? How's everything going? Like I would have not, I wouldn't have known this had they put it out. I think it's very important. But from a creative standpoint, do you ever think I'll come alone first? Do you ever think about people outside of just you know, just life in general, but also from a creative standpoint, just to kind of holler at people every once in a while to see how they're doing. Yeah, it's one of the things that I acknowledge is really bad about me. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, on a personal note, I am absolutely horrible about reaching out to people in general. Even Music, life in general. In general. Like, okay. it's, I, I've always been this way. I, I've thought about it very, very heavily. Um, and the thing is, a lot of times, too, is... Uh, it's kind of getting deep a little bit, but it's like, uh, I know it's related to some sort of quote unquote trauma or something most likely, but I think about people a lot, Mm -hmm. but I don't actually reach out very often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with just kind of where I'm at and kind of where I feel like, you know, where, I don't know. It's, it's weird because it's like a time thing. I feel like I'm always pressed for time. If, if I'm in, if I, if I happen to be in the moment with somebody, Mm-hmm. I'm perfectly hi- fine talking about anything. And you guys probably know I'll bring up anything. I'll talk about whatever. And, and, you know, it's whatever it is. But sometimes I find it hard to just be in that moment. I don't like talking on the phone. Mm-hmm. I don't like sending texts. Right. You know, I, I don't like any of that stuff. But if I ha- fall into line, if I if I run into somebody I haven't seen in a while, it, you know, out on a Tuesday night or something, I'll have a long conversation with them about that. You know, like it, I'm interested in it. But right. there's a weird like... I don't know if it's a creative thing. I don't know if it's related to that. I don't I don't really know, but I have a really hard time, you know, um being the initiator in that aspect. I think with you, I the only thing I find a little a little different, I'm not going to say odd, but a little different is with you. I know you as someone that is uh very organized. Like you have from a structural standpoint if you're teaching or if you're working, if you have something that you're going to do, it's going to be thought out, well thought out organized and structured so you know maybe i would think you might have time for it because you're so structured to devote maybe you know 15 or 20 minutes just to holler at somebody that's the, that's what i would personally think but to your point it's about how you deal with what you deal with on a daily basis sometimes we get overworked sometimes we stressed sometimes we just lose sight of everything else because we focus on ourselves so i get it yeah. but I, That's I, the only thing I would think of because I yeah, know your structure. No, for sure. I, and you would think that. But what I, what ends up happening a lot of times for me is in those moments, I literally just disconnect from everything. Right. I mean, it's no big secret. My life is all over the place. Right. Like in all the different things that I do, like it's not just the podcast. Podcast takes up three days of my life. And then I'm on to two, three days a week. I'm also doing something completely different. And another day I'm doing something completely different. And right. then there's all these interpersonal things and my wife lives in a different country and you know like it's That's a lot yeah and all these things are moving at the same time it's just i think i think we all kind of fall into it in different types of ways but for me personally I, it is something that i struggle with um reaching right. out and i honestly another part of it too is i don't feel like reaching out to people um too because it's, it's weird sometimes i don't want to like it's not like i don't want people to ask me how i'm doing but mm. like it's it's kind of like, I, I don't know. Maybe that's part of it too. Is it, is it, could it be, I'm not, 
This ain't a one on one interview. Nah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm just asking questions. Um, is it the idea of maybe if someone does ask you that you'll open up at the moment and just go into a long conversation that you might not want to have at the time because you happen to talk to said person or I just don't like to initiate my own personal stuff a oh, lot okay. of times. Um, you know, I'd rather find out like how other people are doing. I'd rather find out and, and I don't know if it's just the nature of who I am or what. Um, it's not that I, and, and I'm, again, I feel like I'm open enough that I'll talk to pretty much anybody about right. myself and right. stuff I'm going through. Obviously I'm talking about this stuff on the internet. Right. But, um, I don't know. I, I feel maybe it's a creative standpoint too. I, sometimes I, I, I think part of it is just wanting to make sure that I accomplished what I want to accomplish. And I know it's a very egoic type of thing that I'm working on, you know, trying not to matter and not yeah. to put myself on that type of plane. But I, I do put a lot of pressure on myself to, to, in the things that I do to like hit a certain plane. Like I put a lot of pressure on myself with this show. I put a lot of pressure with myself in everything that I do in the music and legacy and all that other stuff. So it factors into it in time as well. I think it's the cheat code for me and, and I'll explain that the cheat code is a lot of the people that I work with are my friends as well. That's the creators what, that I that's, know. That's what works best for me. Is so when I talk and they ask about, man, what you, what you working on? What's this and this? It also turns into, uh, how's your brother doing? How's everything been? How's the baby? How's the kids? Yeah. It's just by default because we're already cool. So I'm not pressed to do it. It just kind of happens That's, in through so natural conversation. I've had this conversation too with friends before in the past. And I remember a very specific conversation about if I'm not like in a specific space where I'm working with and around my friends a lot, I will get disconnected. Like I try to intent, kind of like how my lifestyle is the way it is. I like doing the show on Tuesday because I get to see and talk to you guys. Right. You know, otherwise I know I would be disconnected, you know, and, and not even necessarily even because I want to, it's just like, I would fill that time up with something that is going to push towards the legacy that I'm trying to create. Sure. And it's, messed up but it's i mean it this so I'm, I'm glad we do this show because we probably wouldn't be friends <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is is like and shouts to spools spools and i have, have talked about this in the past shouts to all me spools um man. you know i apologized to him because i was like man i feel like i should have reached out to you more just in general just as a friend for me specifically i didn't see brad as much and i would like to see brad you know, and so I that was a good way for me to like have that relationship with Brad. And, I started and so, to call him for that reason because it came over me. I'm like, this is one, <laughs> this is our brother. Like, yeah, I, I should call him, and I did. I start, I talked to him last weekend. Yeah, I text like it's him just last good week. to check, good to check in on your people because we hear that all the time. Terry, jump in because you can relate as well. Your schedule shifts. I know your lifestyle and the schedule that you do. You DJ as well. You have a family and all that type of stuff. How do you think, what, what do you think about that from a, a reach out standpoint? Is that something that you try to work on or it is important to check on your people? I think I could be better at it, but I, I think I don't do a terrible job, okay, so to speak. Uh, when it comes to this um, Eric Sermon situation, though, I think that's more something that he's not going to tell you about anyway if you reach out to him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, could some be. people have certain demons or things that they deal with that just because you reached out to him, they're still not going to tell you about it. That's a good point. Unless something monumental happens to where it's life changing. Like he said, his mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer. So that made him have to take a step back and kind of reevaluate, maybe checking on himself. Yep. So um, I think it is good to check on your people or whatnot. And uh, if you can and vice versa, because a lot of times you run into people that they, they feel like, well, you don't check on me, so I'm not going to check on you. Mm. It doesn't necessarily go like that because right. everybody's life isn't wired the same way. That's why, like, if <clears throat> somebody calls you and you miss a call, you may not call them back for a day or two. And usually the boss oh, cool, man. I understand what's going on. Is that I, I just wanted to holler at you real quick, see what was going on. Simple as that. But um, I think it's more so kind of knowing your people mm -hmm. and knowing that maybe how they, they don't operate. Have, yeah, how they operate. And you know there ain't no love lost if I haven't talked to you. Right. But once we do talk or get back together, it's like we never lost a beat. I can dig that. To, to your point about the, the Eric Sermon thing, I, I remember watching a clip from uh, like when Dilla passed. Or a lot of his close friends didn't know he was sick until he was really sick. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Like even one of my grandmothers, she passed from uh, cancer. Right. Nobody knew she had cancer until she was pretty much going into hospice. 
Dang. Like she didn't tell anybody mm. type yeah. stuff. Even my mom's situation, she waited. She told all the, the close, close people, but she didn't. She was like, I don't want people worried about me. Right. And then right. I have to keep explaining it and saying this over and over. So I'm not yeah. telling everybody. And some people kind of felt a certain way. They was like, well, why didn't she tell me? It's kind of like, well, she was already kind of going through something. Yeah. So she didn't want that extra amount of. She didn't want to center herself in it. Center herself. And then she has to keep answering these same questions over and over. That was her right. Also, that's her choice to handle it that way. So, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, people deal with stuff differently, man. And a lot of times it's, it's just everybody on all ends of the spectrum have to be understanding of who this is that you know. You know what I'm saying? So. I can dig that alone. That's a both of y'all made a, a great point about knowing the people that you're talking about reaching out to. Because there's people right now that I know I can get a call from I ain't talked to in five months, and I'm like, "What up, man? How's everything oh, been?" For sure. I mean, I have yes, people I have. that I haven't talked to in years. It, w- it would be like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we I mean, pick up right where we left off. Yeah, and I, you know, it's just it's, it's what it is. I think a lot of times, you know, I've been in in spaces to where you know life was kicking my ass. I was I was not feeling like I you know not, it wasn't that I didn't want to share, but like. If I knew someone was re- really doing well and their their life was great, or at least on the outside looking in, I didn't want to be that dark cloud that Bring just that energy. You know, so I was like, you know, there, you know, I, I have a friend that like, you know, our our relationship was a little bit strained just because he was doing so incredibly well in his professional pursuits, and I was not, you know, like yeah. I was I was really having a hard time, like both personally and professionally. And I felt like if if I came, you know, I couldn't really talk to him because I felt like I would be a dark cloud. You know, I had a couple friends like that, um, you know, because sometimes yeah. when you really know people. You can't hide how you're feeling from them. Right. You know, and, you know, just the thing with Eric Sermon. I mean, it's crazy how sometimes people's personal demons when they're famous are all the way on Front Street. But some people they don't we don't know until they're ready to tell us because they're so good at hiding things yeah um think okay think about it like you know when we talked about you know in the in the uh you know the best you know biopics new edition temptations jackson five nobody knew that ricky bell had a serious drug problem until the movie we always thought it was bobby brown that had the problem right true you know because everything that happened to bobby brown was on the front page of the news story, like, but somehow Ricky Bell had this serious drug problem. He's where he, flying under the radar. To where he almost OD'd. I remember, like, on the new edition, like, they had a behind the music, and, you know, they, you know, Ricky had, like, this moment where he's, like, talking about Bobby Brown, like, hey, you know, I, I realize he's an entertainer, but this is my friend. And never once did it come up about him having the exact same problem, if not more severe, you right. know? So a lot of times people are so good at hiding things because you know they can be completely i don't you know to to the outside looking in be completely normal and you know but if you delve just if you just peel one layer back you're like oh this person is really going through something sometimes it's asking the right questions at the right time too and and, and, good point you know because you know and and you know i remember i I had the conversation with somebody about this and they were like well you know bobby brown was bobby brown and and you know you know ricky bell you know he was you know Bell Biv DeVoe had slowed down and New Edition wasn't recording. So, but at the same time, like, think about it. You know, it, when even somebody you thought completely fell off or, or you haven't heard from in years, if they get arrested or they get caught in a dope house, it's going to be on the news. It's true. It'll be on these little, these morning shows as a hot topic that, you know, Plastered somebody from, social media. you know, um, uh, uh, the Partridge Family, uh, or some show from the seventies, uh, BJ and the Bear. He got caught in a dope house. I don't know. I, I, that was a real random. Wait, what? BJ and the Bear, man. Yeah, come on, man. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know so outside. it wasn't about him not being incredibly famous at the time, but he was able to hide this from probably everybody except his immediate family. Right. And so until we saw, and, and the thing is, if he didn't give us that in a movie, we still would have never known. I wouldn't have. So, I mean, I just think, you know, uh, you know, I'm glad Eric Sermon has come out of that. You know, I know the o- opioid thing is something that we, uh, you know, kind of talk about is, is it seems to be a white cultural problem. But, you know, yeah. um, in rural situations. But the thing is, like, you never really a know. lot of times these people are prescribed uh, these painkillers after, you know, they might have just got a couple teeth pulled or, you know, you know, have a have a broken bone. They wind up getting these painkillers. Or they and, was listening to the future. 
Well, or there's list in the future. I'm not going to go there, but <laughs> just saying but, it's on it's on wax. It, it, it's and, on wax, and they're just giving they're just giving these these pills. Be like, oh, this will make it all better, and they keep renewing the prescription, even though it's a controlled substance. And then you wind up, you know, literally, if you don't have these, you cannot get through the day because it's basically synthetic heroin, and you'll get sick if you stop taking it. It is. Yeah. That's, so, that's how a lot of people end up on it. Actually, is because. They can't afford the heroin anymore. Yeah. No, they can't afford the pills, yeah, so they, they, so they end up getting on heroin. Get on heroin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, once again, shout out to Eric Sermon. Like, if Glad he didn't, he's doing if he better. Didn't, if he didn't tell us, and you never know who this might help by him saying this out loud. So, you know, I, I hope, you know, he has it really kicked because it's a hard thing to get off of. People find themselves relapsing on a regular basis. Now that he, he's told us, maybe there are people who can hold him accountable in case he ever falls off the wagon. Right. So, sure. you know, it is what I it hope is. It, but and, I, I hope he's and, and surrounded by good to people. Him, man. Good vibes to him. Yeah, yeah, I hope sure. he's surrounded by a whole bunch of good people and, uh, and people that care about him. Dominator says, uh, how do you feel? How do you guys feel about time in regards to checking in on people like the right place, right time? And I think that kind of goes back to knowing your friends, like we were saying earlier, yeah. and kind of knowing how to gauge. Like, I know if I'm around somebody, I can pick up on certain vibes, too. Right. If they want to share something, right, 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 right. then I might ask. Yeah. I don't um, think there's a, ever a bad time to ask nah. as a friend, though. Like, <clears throat> the, the worst you're going to get is just, like, them being maybe a little defensive about it and mm -hmm. not talking about it. Right. Well, but, I, I think you know. some. I think there are some people... Uh, to what you're talking about, Lon. I think there are some people that uh, get locked in on certain things, and they're so tunnel vision. This tunnel vision, and they're so focused. Even if you're a friend, it's like it's like tiptoeing the line. Do I really want to call or do I not? But right. to your point, if the relationship is there, then they just might get mad for a little bit and be like. What's up, man? What you want? It's all good. good yeah, it's like good me, to hear. right? Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. It's like, that's actually you. Yeah, yeah it's like, like Mike. What do you want? Yeah, yeah. What, what did you text me for? You know, I don't like text messages, like yeah, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not that it, it's um a lot of it too is uh, for me personally. This isn't like a me hour, but like a lot of me, me personally is like I get stuck in my head, and I do get tunnel vision, and I get folk when I get focused on something, it's like I'm I'm in it, zoned out. I'm like in it, like I'm working on a project, or if I'm working on, or if I'm have something I'm trying to figure out in my head like I get so locked up into it that it's like the rest of the world kind of gets and anything that like intrudes on that it's really hard for me to kind of break myself out of it um but you know it's just what look I I've, I've found myself just doing this is like just sending someone a text and just saying you good yeah yeah you know and, and, and you know uh, and, and a, a yes or no will do and sometimes that person will be like they'll send me something and I'll be like hey do you need to talk you know, because some because the thing is, like, it is a situation where, like, a friend of mine who, like, you know, we, you know, sometimes it's just people to feel you. See, it, it looks like they got everything that they could possibly want in the world, and once again, those are the people that don't get checked on because yeah. they're presenting, especially in the age of social media, where you can present um, a facade. For sure. Oh, it's people on Instagram. And, There's no care in the world. You can and see it. You, you know, I mean, just like one of the craziest things that I've I've noticed and, and been able to pick up on is that when I see people's marriages disintegrate basically on social media, like they don't have to announce to the world that they're divorced, but you can just see it used to be, yeah. you know, them together all the time. And now it's just them and the kids all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that stuff is all for show anyway. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. you know, I, people I, I, don't share the bad on social media yeah. until all of a sudden they're throwing a party because they're getting a divorce. And, yeah. And yeah. they're cheesing and happy all of a sudden. And getting like, clout off that. You know, yeah, exactly. And so, like, I'm, you know, like, it's been people who be like, you know, when I check up on them, they're like, well, you know, me and so and so aren't together anymore. And it's like, I know. Because there was one time, I, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't I say I know, but like, you know, like in my mind, I was like, well, you know, yeah, I kind of yeah. figured that out. But we, I, I remember uh, we was, see it. I remember there was because, you know, and sometimes it can save you a little heartache because one time I, I asked a friend of mine, it was when uh, coaches reopened uh, after the pandemic. And uh, I was like, so how is so and so? And they were like, I don't know. They're back in the city that they uh, were in when uh, I met them. And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about them Colts, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and you being know, locked up in the house during that that uh, hey, some people, pandemic. That pandemic had people pulling hair out. Look, some people, literally, some people realize that they uh, they like their they love their significant other, but they really didn't like them not enough to be around them all day every day. Yeah, you yeah. learned. Well, I mean, I know you, a lot of, you meet a lot of 
uh, married couples that don't necessarily like each other well, like that, but they they make it work. Oh, it because depends. I mean, a marriage is work at the end of the day anyway. Yeah. You the have pandemic, to actually work on it. Look, you're going to find out there's some people that, that, you know, they love their kids, but they didn't like them either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, choo- you, you choose that, right? Like, you choose to love somebody. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. you choose to go through all that stuff. Like, my grandparents were married for 50 some years. I don't, I don't think they ever liked each other when I was alive. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. You know, everybody has, uh, Either you had grandparents or you knew of somebody's grandparents that literally bickered at each other all, all the, time. the time. That was my grandparents. Okay. Like, I'm talking, like, full out, shut the hell up, Possum. Yo, Possum, <laughs> yo, Possum take out the trash. You sitting there as a kid, like, man, Your cooking sucks. It was normal for me. <laughs> yeah. It, be, it, it turns into comedy at the hey, end. Hey, man, the Stewart household during the holidays was, was, was always, there's always one. Hey, don't say holidays. <laughs> Your boy's a hater. You know how you get around the holidays. I, I'm not. Right. I, first of all, you, if anybody. Mike people, love bringing up old stuff. All, <laughs> if any, if any, and I'm going to continue First of all, to. if anything, people were hating on me because the holidays oh, were so go. great. Whatever, man. Whatever, uh, man. When I was, But you know what? I, I will say. I'm starting um, to get mad now. Right now. And I, I need to you get this out. You did it to yourself. Um, I did. Uh, it's time for y'all to turn off these Christmas lights. 